What's up everybody? Today I'm going to talk to you guys about getting hacked. First I'm going to share experiences that I've had with this and then I'm going to talk a little bit more about getting hacked and our current kind of place in humanity and why you not only should expect that this will happen, but you should plan on getting hacked at some point. Inevitably, it is going to happen in some form or another. So first I'll explain the two scenarios that I've been hacked. Okay, so the first time I got hacked was uh, while I was in Nicaragua and I logged into my Walmart account one day and I saw that there was an order for a $500 graphics card that had been placed using gift cards in the Walmart account that I had not used yet. And these gift cards weren't sitting very long. They had only been sitting there for a day or two. So it turns out that hackers are able to get access into accounts and check and see if there are any gift cards. And the reason that hackers will check and see if there's gift cards is because if a gift card is already loaded to a walmart.com account, you don't need any confirmation number or security number in order to use it. So you can just place the order, okay? And I'll get a little bit more into why this is a vulnerability, particularly with Walmart, after I explain the other time that I was hacked. So the second time that I was hacked, um, my one of my PayPal debit cards was used to make a purchase on ToysRUs.com, two $500 purchases, right? And what's interesting about this is that I have two PayPal debit cards, right? And one of them has been used on like 15 different sources, right? So as soon as I saw that my account was compromised, I was like, oh, okay, it has to be that, that card, right? Because that's the one that has been used the most, but what I've learned is that, oh, well, that, that it wasn't that card, which was really weird to me. It was the card that I've like never used. I only used with one or two sources, which means that it should be less, that information is less available. But now that I've explained, okay, those are the two scenarios where I was hacked. And in both situations, I was able to revert it and get my money back, right? Um, but ultimately in this digital age, privacy, is not a thing. You can think that your information is secure and in a perfect world, nobody's sharing your addresses or your email or your social security number. But the reality is that there are tons of companies who don't give a fuck about privacy. What they care about is making it look like they care about privacy. And so that's what I'm gonna get a little bit into now as to how this is happening. We're gonna talk about Walmart, for example. So on walmart.com, you, can add gift cards, right? And so basically the way that you can understand it is that hackers have the ability to access your account quickly, right? The thing is, okay, once they're in your account, they can't just use your credit card unless they know your security code, right? So in the situation with Walmart, because gift cards are available, um, once a gift card has been loaded into the account, then it can be used, right? So that, that gives opportunity to the hackers. And you might think, oh, somebody knew you, knew you, knew me, knew I was a drop shipper, yada, yada. The reality is that's not how it works. A group of hackers or a hacker has found some kind of loophole in Walmart's system, okay? And this is inevitable because of the size of Walmart. Walmart is a huge company and they, every company is gonna tell you, we take absolute utmost measures to protect our privacy and yada, yada, yada. Guys, I've gone through dumpsters and found social security numbers. Like once a Sprint building got like, uh, I don't know if it went out of business or whatever it was, all of the contents of the building was put in a dumpster, right? And I saw office chairs and a whole bunch of like new stuff. So I went through it and I found a cabinet filled with people's names and social securities numbers. Like all of that information just lying in the trash. Like you can think that your information is safe, but I assure you it is not safe. We live in a reality where we can buy people's credit card numbers online. That's a thing. You can go to websites and buy people's identities. Again, what you need to understand is hacking isn't just a thing that's happened. 
that, that can happen. It is something that will happen to you. Inevitably, if you have any kind of digital presence, at some point, something of yours will get stolen or taken from somebody else through some kind of hacking. It's absolutely inevitable. And so what you need to do is to anticipate it and understand how to protect yourself, right? So in both of the scenarios where I was hacked, I noticed really quickly and I was able to cancel the Walmart order and prevent it from shipping. So then I got refunded and with PayPal, it's just like a credit card company. If there is a transaction in like a state you don't live in for a hundred dollars or three hundred dollars or a thousand dollars, you can just be like, uh, hey, this isn't mine and you file a charge back and then you get that money back, right? There's insurance for all these reasons. But what, what I really wanna get at to you guys in this video is this concept of privacy online. In a perfect world, we would have privacy. All companies would take utmost care about our data. The reality is we live in a world where more often than not, security isn't security. It's just something to make us feel better, something to to relieve us, to make us think that we're safe, when the reality is we're not safe. <laughs> there's, there's, there's so many things that can go wrong, and obviously we're safe in the fact that usually it's insured and we're covered and we can fix the situation, but you do have to be preventative of this kind of stuff. You do have to, to make sure that you are checking your accounts so that you can catch these things in time. And like, I know people with bank accounts whose bank accounts have suddenly gone at negative $3,000 because somebody got their bank uh, account information. And to better understand this, like you really have to understand that most hackers don't know you. Most times that you get hacked, it's not because some, some person has a personal vendetta against you. What's happening is that some company has made some mistake and is using some kind of outdated system and there is a loophole. That loophole is taken advantage of and then suddenly tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people's identities are public. And this has happened so many times with so many different companies that it's safer to assume that your identity or credit card information is actually available somewhere for purchase. It's more likely that something about you is available for purchase somewhere than not, whether it's your email address or your mailing address or whatever it is. Information isn't private. We want it to be private, but the reality is because these big, big, big companies have so much information, whenever they make a little mistake, then that information becomes publicly available. And understand that the second something is leaked, it doesn't matter if the person then fixes their habits and fixes their routine or changes their software. That information became public and was documented on different servers. It, it just has to be available for minutes and then it is eternally public, basically. There are parts of the internet that their whole existence is to just take information that's available on other parts of the internet and document it and store it in case that information is no longer down. The internet is so big and so impossible to understand that like, you have to assume that if something is available on the internet for even a couple minutes, it's highly likely that it exists forever. Um, and this isn't going to change. This is going to be continuously a problem where these big, big, big companies don't take the necessary precautions to protect our data, right? And again, they're going to tell you that they are. They're going to tell you that everything is safe. But I know from absolute personal experience, like Sprint, Sprint as a company, they probably advertise that they're quite safe with their data, that they're not gonna sell it, you know? But at some point, they paid somebody to demolish one of their offices. So Sprint didn't make your data publicly available, but that person who was paid to get rid of information Maybe they chose to throw it in the dumpster instead of burning it or instead of disintegrating it or instead of accurately getting rid of it, right? What, there, there, we can only guess what led to me finding a whole pile of social security numbers in a dumpster, right? Obviously that's not ideal, but my point is this kind of stuff happens 
and it's not going to change. And so in order to better protect yourself online, you need to anticipate that you will be hacked at some point in some way. You need to check regularly to make sure that you catch these things when they happen because then you're probably going to be okay. But ultimately, this isn't something that you can escape completely. No matter what you do, inevitably, at some point, you will be affected by this kind of thing. Obviously, like bank accounts are generally more safe than things like PayPal accounts, but the second that you use a credit card online or on a machine, you have to understand that anytime you use a credit card, in order for that transaction to go through, the information necessary for that credit card has to be sent somewhere, right? And so obviously, ideally, that information is encrypted, so it's secured. So even if somebody finds it, it's just garbly gook. And unless they understand how to unencrypt it, then they can't use it, right? But the reality is that that isn't always the case. Sometimes this information is shared and people interject it, you know? So uh, this, this, and you, can, you can think of pretty common ways that this might happen, like... Like if you enter your credit card information in a website, but you don't realize that there's actually a cookie, some kind of virus on your computer that just records what you just entered. So despite the fact that you are using a website with a completely secure service that is encrypting your information before they send it, your keyboard types in that credit card number and something gets that data. There are so many different opportunities to get people's information. And there are so many big companies out there who aren't taking proper precautions to make sure that people's information is safe. You can count on being hacked and you can expect it to happen. It's just a matter of time. And what you need to do is understand, okay, when this happens, this is what I'm gonna do to get my money back. This is what I'm gonna do to make sure that I have some insurance against that, right? And ultimately, this is just a consequence of our modern age. Maybe this will get better with time, but ultimately, we exist when the internet's becoming a thing. And it's impossible to fathom what that means for our future, right? There's so much opportunity, and also a lot of opportunity for things to go wrong, and people to get frustrated, and things to suddenly change exponentially overnight, right? So I figured I'd just do this video just to make you guys aware that this is a thing. Um, and like I said, with, with the situation with Walmart, you can avoid that by not keeping gift cards in your account, right? So you, sorry, I know it's really windy. Um, so there's always a preventative measure that can be done. So whenever you're using a platform, you have to think, okay, what is the weakness here? How could hackers manipulate this? And then figure out like, okay, with Walmart, the weakness is that hackers can fairly easy get access into Walmart accounts, right? But that doesn't that's not necessarily dangerous because then then like well obviously that's bad. Okay, that is bad. But they can't necessarily order anything unless you have a bunch of gift cards available, right? But also think about this. We've established that hackers can easily get into a Walmart account. That means they can easily get every single address in that account. So imagine a drop shipping account gets hacked. Suddenly, these hackers have 300 addresses, right? So they can go off and sell that to another company. And inadvertently, the drop shipper has revealed the information of their customers because the hackers stole it from the company that the dropshipper uses. And this is just one example. I cannot continue to go over all of the different ways that hackers can acquire your information. There are so many different scenarios. And again, you're gonna get hacked. It's absolutely inevitable. What you need to do is figure out how you're going to respond when it does happen and try and figure out how it may happen so that you can respond quicker. Because usually if you're able to respond straight away, you're going to be able to relieve the situation. It's not going to be the end of the world. But, you know, it's a thing. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.